Okay, so even though this is for a mirror, we know that in general R and F go together. So in part two, no, in part one, we got the smaller focal length. Yeah. So that was the rounder one. Yeah. And he even reminded you that was the smaller radius of curvature there. Yeah. Okay, or we already, already kind of knew that. The, the, they said maximum tension. Well, the tension is the thing that's making the eye round. Again, it's kind of like pushing down on the ends of the, the uh, contact lens. Okay. Is this equation, and I've seen this in class also, this equation that they use? Yeah, um, I think uh, looking at your homework, I didn't. I thought also only one problem where you had to use that, but uh, maybe that's a good one uh, to know here. So um, anyway, this is basically just saying that uh, F and R are directly related again. So remember I said that for a, for a mirror, you would use R equals 2F. For a mirror, you would use R equals 2F. Well, you can't do that here, uh, but you get the same type of thing. Let's so quickly see how to use that. So, thanks. For a mirror, the magnitude of R equals the magnitude of 2F. I put the dots in because that's for magnitudes. Uh, oh, but for lens, that's not true. So yeah, so good. we need a different equation for lens. Well, here's the equation for the lens. So N1 is the original index of refraction of what, uh, where the light is coming in from, and N2 is the index of refraction of the material that the lens is made out of. Um, R1 refers to the first side of the lens that the light hits, and R2 refers to the second side of the lens that the light hits. sign convention convex to the object means a positive R and concave object is a negative R. So, in this case, would this be positive R or negative R? Because the object is obviously over here, because this is where the light is coming from. Well, this side is convex to the object. So in our equation, obviously the equation was that this is equal to 1 over f. This is the equation for 1 over f. So in our equation. Now in this case, what was n1? Well, n1 was the air. Well, we know that the index of refraction for air is 1. Okay, so instead of putting in R1 here, I'm going to say that this is the magnitude of R1 and a plus sign, because we decided this was going to be positive. Yeah, and R2. How do you know R2 is negative? Well, you can see this is concave to the object. This is concave, so over here, this gets a little tricky. Minus 
So now I'm just using R1 and R2 to stand for the magnitudes. So I'm putting in the dots for that, and then I'm putting in the signs. Well, then this is going to be a negative number. Well, a negative minus a negative makes a positive over here. If you actually have to use this equation, you have to be very careful to realize that this negative is a different one than this one. There's always, this is just a subtraction sign. Yeah. By definition, there's a subtraction sign then here. And then if R2 is concave, it's going to be a negative number. Yeah. Um, so the negative and the negative together gives you a positive. It would be very easy to make a careless mistake with the signs over here. So as usual, I think it's helpful to put in the dots to show that these are the magnitudes. Okay, and now, um, well, finally, um, is N, we know N2 is bigger than 1, right? Remember that 1 is the smallest you could be, so this is positive. Well, this basically shows us now that there must be a positive relationship between F and the radii. Now that, we've got, now that everything's in terms of positives, we can see if these denominators are big over here, we need this denominator to be big on the left-hand side. So this basically shows there's a positive relationship between F and R. That's the same thing that was obvious for the mirror. Yeah. For the mirror, it's obvious that there's a positive relationship between F and R. Um, but if we work through all of our business here, we can see there's a positive relationship between F and R um, in magnitudes here uh, as well. By the way, when I wrote this down, I was writing it down in magnitudes. But obviously, this equation is not in magnitudes. You have to put in the signs. I guess, actually, this equation would still work if you use that rule that I just talked about. Um, for example, let's say you have a, oh no, it wouldn't work. So this is concave to the object, but it's supposed to have a positive focal length. Yeah, so actually, again, it's important for the mirror, there's actually a question in this sample exam that has a trap there. It's important for the mirror to remember this formula is only in terms of magnitudes. It's your job to figure out the right sign on the focal length of the mirror. We know that the converging mirror has a positive focal length and a diverging mirror has a negative focal length. However, this equation over here, I think this is called the lens maker's equation. Yeah. This lens maker's equation, the official equation, we do not put in the dots. The official equation only works if you put in the sign values, the sign values for R and R2. And if you put in those sign values, you'll get the right sign value for F as well. Um, it, was, it was easier to think about this by separately putting in the magnitudes and then putting in the signs separately. Uh, but this definitely is in terms of the signs. Okay. Notice he's not really asking you to do much work here. He just kind of mentioned the equation. And all, he didn't actually do any of his algebra, did he, in the answer key? If you look at the answer key, all he actually did is he just wrote the equation and said, a smaller m is obtained with a smaller r. He's just saying it's obvious from the equation. Therefore, it's rounder. So um, you wouldn't necessarily have to do all this algebra to prove that. At least he didn't do that in the answer key. But anyway, we've shown that this equation really does show that a smaller f goes with a smaller r. And remember, um, um, r and f are not measures of roundness, they're measures of flatness. Right. So if you have a smaller um, f and r, that means you have a rounder lens. So with the diverging mirror, that you get a negative f? I mean, that's not saying that the r is like a negative number, it's just that it's a for, for, for mirrors, we don't really care about the sign on r, right. right? The only reason we need the signs here was to make this equation work yeah. um, over here. For a mirror, the, base, the best way to do it is for a mirror, you figure out the magnitude of R is the magnitude of 2 times F, and then we already know the sign, converging here and diverging here, and you never care about the sign of the radius of a mirror. That's not useful for anything. So. Okay. okay. So thanks for the sure. extra. So anyway, as usual, my advice would be, um, before you do anything new, just redo the problem we just did. Um, go through those conceptual stuff that we went through. When we went through the conceptual stuff on Wiggins' principle, we didn't just do that problem, but I kept saying, oh, this would be a good problem, or this would be a good problem. So try to ask how you would answer all those little questions, like um, how does Wiggins' principle account for the fact that a wave front propagates into a new, uh, that a planar wave stays planar, and that a spherical wave stays spherical, and how does it account for the idea that the wave bends at, um, at the edges when it goes through a slit? Um, so we used the Wiggins' principle to account for a bunch of different things. Um, and then uh, the flower pot question I think that we did, you, know, you definitely stand to just do the whole thing all over again. And the same thing for this I question. There's certainly lots of things. Um, this is the first semester I think that I actually ever understood the I. 
You know, I've been doing eye questions for a long time, but I didn't do enough repetition, and I kept forgetting how to do it, basically. So for anybody, including me, unless you're doing the repetition, uh, that's what happened to me. Every semester I would learn how to do the eye, and then I would forget it. Without the repetition, you, you don't remember it. So it's important to go back and try to uh, repeat that. I remember. These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There is a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm or you can just use the link in the info box. By the way, I also offer tutoring via Skype and you can find more information about that Skype tutoring service at my website. Thanks.